Hello, I'm Masaki Miki, an assistant professor at the University of Tokyo. Today I'm going to talk about tension compression mixed membrane cell phone finding. This is a brief summary of my talk. I start by explaining why we need to talk about the mix of tension and compression, then I'll move on to the detail of the problem. In general, tension compression mix is trickier than pure compression, so I'll explain the major challenges in this problem. Basically, Pure compression problems always have a solution. Conversely, tension compression mixed problems require a compatible set of boundary conditions. Finally, I will present one set of compatible boundary conditions that works for this problem. Pure compression vault came from research, and the shells or fake shell perhaps designed by Star Architect look too different. How can we bridge the gap between these two streams? I believe Candida's hypershell shows inspiring insight because it is already a tension compression mix shell. The basic idea of this research is that if we allow a mix of tension and compression in a membrane shell, it will likely enable us to expand the possible forms that the membrane shells can take. We use Aries stress function as our primary tool. The basic idea of the stress function is that its curvature is interpreted as the stress in the shell. So we can select a pure compression stress state by selecting a stress function with a positive Gaussian curvature and the tension compression mixed stress state by selecting a stress function with a negative Gaussian curvature. These are the equilibrium equations given by a stress function. The horizontal equilibrium is always guaranteed, regardless of the choice of the stress function. On the other hand, the equilibrium in Z is given by a general form of the second order PDE, so the stress function does not guarantee anything on it, and the general theory about the second order PDE applies. Basically, pure compression is elliptic, which is easy to solve. However, tension compression mix is hyperbolic, which is trickier to solve than an elliptic one. By flipping the sign of one term in the equation, the nature of the problem changes dramatically. To see this, we will look at a simple wave equation. This wave equation literally represents a one-dimensional wave propagation through time. The waves run either from left to right or from right to left. So on the two-dimensional time-space domain, the waves run along the lines crossing the x-axis at 45 degrees. Those diagonal lines are called characteristic lines. This means that if we have a boundary condition drawn in red, then you need a boundary condition drawn in blue that exactly matches the wave induced by the boundary condition drawn by red. From this observation, we understand that the boundary condition in the hyperbolic PDE cannot be freely determined. Any boundary condition that contradicts the form of the waves running along the characteristic lines is incompatible with the problem. In contrast, the pure compression or pure tension cases always give a solution, regardless of the choice of the boundary conditions, because the solution is basically a smooth averaging between the boundary conditions. There is a textbook that pioneered this problem, and the book says that the characteristic lines in our problem are the asymptotic lines of Ehrlich's function, and that is correct. The asymptotic lines exist only in the tension compression mix zones, and they typically run across the domain diagonally at roughly 45 degrees. Okay, let's look at the case with the circular plan. By tweaking the parameters, we obtain the clean and interesting solution, Unfortunately, this was judged to be an incorrect solution, which means that the original problem did not have a solution. Why? When we increased the number of control points, the solution became unstable. A standard finite element method was used, and the theory of finite element method guarantees that the numerical solution converges to the exact solution when the degrees of freedom are increased. So if it did not converge, this is strong evidence that the problem itself did not have a solution. We have more evidence that the solution is incorrect. The error plot, which is supposed to be nearly flat for a correct solution, had too many errors in the tension compression mix zone. The membrane energy versus bending energy ratio is too small, and the maximum deformation exponentially increases when the thickness is very small. Simply stated, this analysis suggests that the solution we obtained is a bending system. What is happening here is that even though the problem is safe did not have a solution, our numerical method returned the solution with no errors. So when attempting tension compression mix from finding, we always need to carefully examine whether a correct solution was returned or not. 
So we tested one simple idea. We inserted parts of Gaussian curvature zones between the tension compression mix zones and put the support there. This is because this configuration makes a lot of sense from a structure design point of view. This is the solution we obtained. The solution is clean and stable even when the number of control points was increased. The error plot is sufficiently flat. The membrane energy versus bending energy ratio is high enough, and it even increases when the thickness is led to a small one. The maximum deformation barely changes, even if the thickness is led to a small one. So, although we must admit that this solution is still at the level of the hypothesis, it is very likely that we have obtained a correct solution for a tension compression mixed membrane shell. This is an overlay of the asymptotic lines of the stress function over the form finding solution. As you can see, the tension compression mix zones are covered by waves, and those waves run along the asymptotic lines of the stress function. So, although we don't see the stress function in the real world, we do see their asymptotic lines as the forms of the tension compression mix membrane shells. After submitting this paper to IASS, we have found more. Here are some concluding remarks. When attempting tension compression mix from finding no membrane shells, a compatible set of boundary conditions must be solved first, otherwise there is no solution in the problem. A compatible set of boundary conditions has been likely found. While physical interpretation of the pure compression shells is still the inverted hanging chain, threads, or fabrics, tension compression shells can be interpreted as the waves running along the asymptotic lines of the air reserve function. Thank you.